Hall of Famer Steve Young joins us now. And Steve, chalk one up for the old guys. Phillip Rivers and the Chargers down two scores in that building to that team, and they come out with a win. I'll get to the two-point decision in a minute. But just if, if you can take me through down two scores in the fourth quarter with time really exhausted by that drive before they got the ball back, how did the Chargers manage to pull this off? You know what, Scott? It's a team that has gotten a lot better. I mean, the weapons that Phillip has, the defense that continues, that defense in front is no joke. I mean, in many ways, people are like, the Chargers, they're 11-1 and one over the last 12 games? Who knew? I mean, it's like this team has been put together over a little period of time, and Anthony Lynn has energized it, kind of like Jim Harbaugh when he joined the, the, the 49ers. It's all of a sudden, that this team just gelled, and there's guys that you don't come back like that. In the NFL, late in the season, playoff, unless you are the real deal, people don't just trick their way through it. And so to me, this is a very substantive team that now looks at maybe being an AFC West champ, if possible, and sending the Kansas City Chiefs on the road. Yes, they, they do have some weapons, but they're down some weapons in this game. Keenan Allen's out, got the hip pointer. You're down to your third string running back. And the throws, that and, and I defer to you as a guy that had to make throws on the fourth down throws, throwing them to Benjamin. Oh. I mean, how do, you, how do you describe the throws he made that he had to make or the game's over? It's called anticipatory throwing. In other words, you, only the veterans, only the best do this and they know because they have to let it go it has to come out early and the receivers know can you tell can you tell sure their their heads turning early they know that that ball is coming as soon as they break even though there's like inches between the defender and to me that's just old pro throwing and you you can't teach it you have to live it through you have to live through it you have to learn nobody's natural at it you have to just and that's what philip rivers has been doing for a long time he just didn't have the players right. you know it's like drew Brees when he finally got a defense he went to the super bowl philip rivers gets some guys gets a defense Maybe it's the Super Bowl. We love when t teams go for two when it works, and then we second-guess you when it doesn't. The, the play call, uh, Mike Williams, who had a monster game, ends up wide open. Um, what, what happened there? It seemed like miscommunication, I suppose. Absolutely. No question. They just wanted to trade it off, and they didn't yeah. do it right. And, you know, in the great moment, Anthony Lynn, as a young coach, you say to yourself, what are the odds? What, what would you do? Would you take one play from the two on the road in Kansas City with all that's – or would you want to play it out and, and, and drip it out? And I just think that, that, you know, the coach is more and more saying, no, you know, I got my shot here on the road. I'm going to take it. And with that bad trade off by two, two safety um, – two corners that just didn't trade off well, it was wide open. I don't remember a play like that where it's just a bust ne from yeah. the one. It's very unusual. Neither do I. And I love it just because don't give the ball back to Mahomes. I mean, why? why? Yeah. I mean, I, send I, him I, home. I, I can't live with that. Now – I, Steve, this is one of my least favorite things to do, but it, when it's worth bringing it up, I'll bring it up. The, Walt Anderson's crew, I thought, had a miserable night. I felt like the drive that went seven and a half minutes for the Chiefs was aided by some calls that I thought against the Chargers were poor. And then I wonder about some of the calls that went against the Chiefs down the stretch. I wonder if you saw things the same way I did. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's ticky-tack stuff, like the, inter the interference at the end. He, he pulled his hand down, but you saw worse earlier than it called. Sometimes I think, Scott, in the big games, when they know the whole world is watching, sometimes officiating crews almost like doubt themselves. They kind of like, it's not just a big game for the two playoff sure. teams. It's, it's a big game for this crew, and they end up like seeing things, and they get off, and then they know, they know when they're in a little bit off track, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. crap, and now how do I get back on track? And so officiating crews are just like teams. They lose their momentum. They get a halftime, like, let's regroup. Let's figure out how we're going to make this better. And some, it sometimes just devolves. And so, I, I, you know, the best, stop the bleeding. And some crews just can't get it, can't get it stopped. And plus, it's contextual too. A lot of great crews have to recognize in the moment that pull on the hand. Yes, technically, maybe so. I get that. But contextually, as a ball that's out of bounds, I'm, I'm going to hold on to that flag. Interesting, interesting. All across the board, lots to discuss. Obviously, and the significance and the stakes couldn't have been much higher. What a football game, Steve. Appreciate the time really? and the chance to visit with you. And if our paths don't cross before Christmas, have a great one, and we'll talk again soon, okay? You too, Scott. Thanks, Thanks brother. Talk to you.